Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. I'm at USM Finch Farm with Ian Snowden. Now what images come to mind when I say Paul Gascoigne? Maybe the tears at Italian 90, maybe his 1991 FA Cup semi-final goal for Tottenham against Arsenal. What about the infamous incident with Vinnie Jones? We of course had the pleasure to watch him at Everton Football Club and we had the enormous pleasure, Snods, to meet him last week. Yeah, we did. It was fantastic see Gazza. Hopefully he's on the road to recovery. Uh, many great stories. Uh, I was just delighted to see him. Played against him a couple of times on a few occasions. and How pleased were the lads to see him as well, Snods? Oh, so Jordan Pickford, Wayne Rooney, Jags, everybody were, wanted to see Gaza. He's still a massive icon, mm. uh, British football, he really is. and He looks on the mend as well. He, he does, he does, and it, uh, it's great to see him that way because uh, what a talent, what mm. a footballer and what a character. What everybody, a, everybody loves Gaza. What a lovely, lovely guy. Gaza came to USM Finch Farm, as I say, last week. And of course, we took the opportunity to sit him down in this very room to speak to the Everton show. Yeah, I obviously come to uh, come down at a later stage of my my career and uh, things. I think it was in Middlesbrough at the time, and obviously I left because I, I wasn't I wasn't feeling myself. I wasn't. Uh, I knew I'd worked with Walter before, and I knew obviously he was at Everton, and I knew he'd bring the best out of us even at that age, you know. And it was such a buzz when I come here. I was excited, and uh, you know, one of the ones was uh, I always wanted. I liked derbies, and the play against Everton and Liverpool was one, even though we got beat. It was exciting, but um, I was welcomed well, um, well looked after, and I started really enjoying my football again. And did you enjoy playing at Goodison Park as a ground? You made your debut on a big night as well, didn't you? The night that Duncan Ferguson made his comeback at the club. Yeah, that's right. It was massive. Obviously, me coming back. Well, obviously, me and start for Everton and Big Dunk. I've just seen him there. It's still, still massive. I'm getting shrinking in my old age, I think. But now it's good to see him and. Um, yeah, my mum, he was on his comeback and uh, the fans were unbelievable. You know, you can tell it's, it's like Newcastle, Manchester. You know, there's a football in town where people work just for a Saturday. Got any standout memories of playing at Goodison? Any games that stand out or any particular moments you remember fondly? Yeah, I remember uh, one I always tell people, it was so funny. It was, sometimes it was the only team in the, in the world that I loved being sub because we got them toffees. Yeah. And there were the people coming around with the toffees once. And I remember I thought, well, I'm probably not get on. So I had about 30 toffees. And it was about 10 minutes ago, and what last missed get warmed up. And I saw it getting cramped in the warm up, and then he put us on the pitch, and, and I sort of walked about. But the memories, memories were, um, I mean, every game I played really was um, a great memories, you know. Um, it was just, I think it was more the, the panther as well with the lads, you know, uh, going into the training ground every morning and getting the boys. I used to play. Head tennis for the ground stuff and everything. With the wellies and they used to beat us, it was incredible. Even they were good. Um, but just the whole time I had, yeah, I really enjoyed it. You know, when I look back, I think two changes that made me career, which I'd never have done, was one from Rangers to Middlesbrough, and one was I w still kind of bring me main round at why I left Everton for Burnley. You know, um, but I did. Uh, but I wish I hadn't of. You talked about the fun on the training ground here. Is it right that you brought a parrot in to training one day at Belfield? Yeah, I was out one night and uh, I was bored, so I bought an African grey parrot because I knew they, they could uh, speak a lot, speak a lot of words. So I bought an African grey and um, I thought it wasn't nice to leave at the hotel, so I brought it in, brought it in the training ground, showed the guys, and that left it with the secretary till I finished training. Um, yeah, I loved that parrot. I don't know where I went to. It might have flew off somewhere. Yeah, but I love the crack as well, the banter, you know. Um, it's, massive, it's, it's a great uh, home club, as I call it, you know, like family. And uh, it was nice. Got a very respected manager here now at Everton in Sam Allardyce. What do you make of the job he's doing and the job that he can do for Everton? Yeah, I think Sam, Sam wherever he's went, he's done really, really well, you know. They've always, the clubs that he's went to, God bless him, they've always seemed to be struggling these months to get them out of the rift where they've been in and took them higher, you know, and I think just given time, he can bring Everton in great again, you know. You know, his experience as well, off the, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as a manager, you know, he knows, he knows a hell of a lot. Um, I think his eth ethics are good as well, you know, um, what he wants from the players, but what he wants for himself as well and the fans. And you mentioned Wayne Rooney before, was he somebody you were aware of when you were here as a, a young lad coming through? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a, when I used to, I used to come watch a youth team on the 19s before playing for Edmonton, you know, they used to get off 11 o'clock. And I remember Harvey 
Colin Harvey said, look, I'm going to put this kid on, watch him. We'll get me 1-0, it was under 19, he only was 14. And he, uh, he come on, he scored um, two unbelievable goals. I think you can still see them on YouTube. But now, what a great player, and it's good to see him back, you know. Well, obviously, the club where he grew up, he's obviously always loved the club. He had other probably opportunities to go elsewhere else, but for him to come back and uh, you know finish his career, it'll be fantastic for him and, and the fans, because obviously you heard the fans a hell of a lot as well, you know. And just lastly, you had a brilliant career yourself. So many good moments for England, for other clubs like Newcastle and Tottenham. Mm. But it still seems like you have a great deal of affection for Everton. Yeah, I mean, it. obviously, it was probably I would say my last, my last club really, great club that I played for. And the memories were just were upstairs. I was having such a laugh. It just coming back the memories, you know. They were great memories, and I always tell people, you know, I might not be able to play football again, but. No one can take away the, the, the memories I have, you know, and I had some great memories out of them. I used to love going in and training. It's not you to play against Gaza many, many times. Oh, one incident stands out. He were only 18, probably 17, 18, and uh, I'd just arrived at Everton and we went to St James's Park. Uh, I played midfield alongside Peter Reid. Uh, I'd heard a lot about him, that he was a special talent, and uh, the game kicked off. Does and uh, after about 10 or 15 minutes, he nutmegged Peter Reid <laughs> and like kind of shouted it as well. He, he intended doing it, he nuts and he put it through Reedy's legs and Reedy smoke coming out of his <laughs> ear and went to go again and he put it through the other way. He went nuts again, <laughs> but he's just he overrun brave. the ball. He brave, it was brilliant, but he overrun the ball slightly. And I thought, here's my chance, and I just got the ball, got him. And obviously he's laid there, he's down injured. And I just went over and I went, show some respect like that. And he's looking at me kind of thing. And then about two minutes later, he was running around and just clubbed me around the ear. And I thought, <laughs> off oh, the don't ball. yeah, off the ball. <laughs> no cameras there or anything, so he couldn't get... But I thought, I thought that's great, that shows he's got a bit about him. Uh, I didn't at the time, but then... Uh, and I just, I said something to him that I, I totally regret ever saying, I would never say to anybody, I asked him how much a week he was on. I went, how much a week? I knew he wouldn't be on much because he was just a young yeah. apprentice. And I went, how much a week are you on? And you could see his face. Anyway, three years later, he got an unbelievable move to Tottenham. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how much is he on? <laughs> kind of thing. And I were aware of it. And I'm thinking, he's going he's gonna to mention this. So we're lining up against Tottenham, going down the, uh, going down the tunnel, Z cars is playing. And all of a sudden I hear snods, <laughs> and I thought that's Gascoigne. <laughs> and I've turned around and he went, "How much are you on a week?" <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, brilliant. He remembered after them few years, kind of thing. Lovely so, way to straighten the score as oh, well, wasn't it? Absolutely brilliant. I were expecting him to give me twenty pound. This well, I don't hear you need it more than me, kind of thing. But no, that's kind of kind of laddie were. Everybody that played for England in the Paul Gascoigne era has got a story to tell because he was so effervescent, he was non-stop, he wouldn't sleep, he was always on the go and, and you were in a squad with Gaza. I was, well. yeah, Italian 90 and we it were a World Cup qualifier uh, against Albania and we were in Albania and uh, the staff had given us loads of bars of chocolate to, to have while we, were, uh, while we were out there three or four days. And uh, I was rooming with Tony Cotty, obviously a teammate, and uh, Reedy was in the in the team and that. And we walked past Gaza's room. I think he was rooming with Chris Waddle at the time. And we uh, we walked past, and there were loads of lads in there. And I thought, what what's happening here? So we walked in, me and TC, and then. Gaza went, have you got any chocolate bars left in your fridge? So I went, yeah, yeah, we haven't touched them, there's loads. He went, go and get them, go and get them. I said, why, what's happening, Gaza? And all the lads said, he's throwing them out of the window to the Albanian kids. And there were, I'd say, 200 kids out there from the age of about five to ten. <laughs> so we tools off to his, uh, to his room, brings all the chocolate bars back. Next thing, he's cutting them all up and he's throwing handfuls out of the window like that to all these kids and they're all going, Gaza, Gaza, and he's <laughs> like, throw more chocolate and they're all fighting for this chocolate anyway <laughs> we run out of chocolate he went go and get your soap <laughs> and we went no guys you can't he went go and get your soap so all the lads went off to the rooms got bars of soap little white soaps like he chops it all up and i'm thinking oh no they can't anyway there you go and they're all like fighting for it picked it up and, went, oh! and they're all going that's <laughs> Going mad at him, honestly. The last, Bobby Robson, the manager, was on his shoulder crying. Tears are coming down his eyes. And the poor kids, honestly. But in the end, the kids were absolutely made up with Gaza. They loved him. 
he, he entertained them for the three days that we were there. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he, he must be a legend in Albania. Yeah, them kids absolutely adored him. He's a legend everywhere. And it was fantastic to see Paul Gascon at USM Finch Farm. We're going to take a short break now. Coming up in part two, we'll be joined by Francis Jeffers. And we'll also start to look ahead to what is a big, big game at Goodison Park on Saturday afternoon when we play Brighton and Hove Albion in the Premier League. <laughs> Welcome back to part two, as you can see here at USM Finch Farm. Snodd and I have been joined by Franny Jeffers. Franny, earlier this week, the under-23s had a, a comfortable win, I think you could say, against Swansea City at Goodison. Yeah, I mean, a uh, couple of couple of first teamers playing always helps. Uh, hasn't been going so well, I don't think, of late. Uh, I've been picking up too many points in the league. Was it a win you needed? Yeah, you'd say so, wouldn't you? I was looking at the league uh, this morning. And you know, I wouldn't like to say we can still win the league because it put a bit of pressure on the lads, but we can certainly we can certainly finish up there. So I think we're s seven points behind Leicester with two games in hand. We're mm. sitting top of the league, so you know we need we need to just finish the season as strong as we can. Worry about ourselves and finish finish as high as we can. We often speak about senior players not playing enough under twenty three football. David Clasen and Ramiro Funes Mori. It would be great for those young players to play alongside two international Yeah, it would. Great experience. Uh, but I always wanted to, uh, coming back from suspension or injury, you always wanted to play in, in reserve team football, but now it's under-23s, obviously. Uh, if you weren't playing playing a game, you're training every week, I'd find that really frustrating. So I'd, I'd want to play. Were they a good example? Were they, they, they were brilliant. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah. Funes has played a couple of games. Uh, I think that's the first time Davies played. Obviously, Benny dropping down as well, who's now sort mm -hmm. of a first-teamer. Uh, great attitudes and like Snod said then you want to be playing don't you, you know, let's have it right if you're not in the team when your opportunity arises you can only be better for for a few games with, with, with the uh, with the under 23s or the reserves as it was uh, back then I mean I was the same if I, if I weren't playing you know you know when your opportunity comes you've got to be bang on because it might only be one game mm. might only be half a game but you've got to take your chance so for Davy and Benny and Funes you know who knows uh, game the weekend might be mm. might be a good opportunity to, for them to play. I've seen a lot of under-23 football this season, Franny, and as the season's gone on, Anthony Evans seems to have got better and better and, and, and enjoys taking a bit more responsibility. The captain's armband, the set pieces, things like that. Yeah, yeah I mean, his ability is undoubted. Uh, always has been ever since I come into the club. He was one of the first ones I, I clapped eyes on and thought, he's got something in. What's mm. his best position, Fran? Uh, I think he's enjoying his position he's in now. Mm. Uh, Out wide right? Is yeah, it? wide right. Will, mm. he, will he end up there? He could end up as a 10. Uh, he could end up wide left, cutting in because he's, he's great technically. I, I just think the front end of the pitch, uh, pro probably out wide, I'd say, is his, his best position. He looks, he looks to be thriving out there at the minute. Some goal he scored from the free kick, wasn't it? It's, honestly, see that every day in training. Mm. We always set a few mannequins up. Uh, after after most training sessions, and honest to God, he does that eight or nine times out of ten. So it's about time he's done it in a game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be watching. We were speaking about Paul Gascoigne in part one of this week's show, Franny, and you met you caught up with him at Finch Farm last week as well, and it was terrific to see him, wasn't it? Unbelievable! Great to see him so well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, just back into the old the old days when I'm having a laugh, Kane and people. <laughs> Me and Unzi got. Pelters off, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But as you say, Daz, it was, uh, it was unbelievable to see him. Big shock, because it was it wasn't muted that he was going to pop in. You know, mm. it was just uh, someone said Gaz is in reception, and I thought <laughs> can't be the Gaz. It? It, it must yeah. be someone else. <laughs> and then went through and seen him, and just just like the old days. It's a great point that Franny makes that it was just like the old days because Gaz has just slipped right back into the banter and was he was giving it out like a machine gun, wasn't he? Does you, you don't get away from that when you've been in a dressing room for all them years, when you've been a player, when you've got the character that Gazza is, uh, he couldn't do nothing else but take the mickey once he came here and the banter Floyd. <coughs> he's uh, he's one of his own, isn't he? He's he unbelievable. Really is. He's um, and even you know our under twenty three players. You know when we were walking in off the training pitch, I said to them, Gazza's here, and they were like, No way, it can't <laughs> be. I was like, Yeah. So when we when we got in there, he was he was there waiting. Uh, a few pitches with the lads and a bit of banter flying, as you said. And he's an unbelievable character, mm -hmm. isn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when when Walter got us together and said, "Are you in Choco?" Um, 
you might think I'm mad here, but I'm going to sign Paul Gascoigne. And I remember thinking, oh my God, <laughs> no way that Kaz is going to play in the same side as me or I'm going to play in the same. And you know what, he turned up at Choco and what a man. Just from, from the minute he arrived, to, I, think, I think I had one season with him, it was honestly, you, you used, to, you used to bounce out of bed in the morning and think, I can't wait to get in to see what he's up to. How good's that? Yeah. How good is that? Brilliant. <laughs> He was, he, he was past his best, but he still showed flashes, didn't he, of, oh, of listen, what he was about? I loved him being in the team mm. because, you know, for someone like myself, a young player who played off the shoulder and made runs, there's no better footballer than, you know, as you said, he, his legs were gone a little bit and he said that himself the other day, but his brain was still there. Were you terrified about what he'd come up with next when he was at Belfield? Oh, yeah, you had, to be, you had to be on your guard. <laughs> you had to be on your guard. I mean, from the minute you got out the car, <laughs> in the car park there, anything could happen to you. <laughs> From getting to your car to the dressing room, absolutely anything could happen to you. A lovely, lovely story, by the way. Pat Van den Howe, who was Gazza's teammate at Tottenham, mentioned to Gazza that uh, his partner's father hadn't been too well. Lo and behold, the very next day, unannounced, Gazza finds out where he lives, goes round, knocks on the door. Hiya, Tony, how are you? That's incredible. Incre that's just the man he is. Mm. That is, uh, I didn't, I didn't know about that. I knew uh, Pat's uh, partner's father were, wasn't very well, but that just shows what a man Gazza is. Right, let's look ahead now to the weekend fixture with Brighton Hove Albion at Goodison Park. It's a big, big game for Everton in the Premier League. This is Sam Allardyce's take on that one. Well, every game's a big game, but th none more so than this one after two disappointing results away from home, and uh, and, uh, and then we are working extremely hard behind the scenes to try and make sure we deliver the same performance and result we did against Leicester and Crystal Palace in our last two home games and and to have the fans enjoy the football that we we deliver on Saturday and and keep those fans behind us because they're so important to us on Saturday to to give the players uh, the energy and the and the desire to go out and win the game which they always try and do but uh, certainly at home that's been a, a very positive way forward for us. Our real disappointment is of course the continual away defeats that we have to try and stop but you know put that behind us lads and uh, and make sure we deliver on Saturday for the fans never mind ourselves. Phil Jagielka's back in the group what kind of impact has that had? Phil's it back in the squad of, of, from his uh, from his knee injury and I think that uh, you know, we de to decide whether we draw on his experience for for Saturday, and um, and like I said, uh, I think the experience of the side needs to come to the forefront on Saturday. You know, it is a very experienced Premier League squad, and I think that they need to draw on their experience to uh, take the pressure on board and deliver the performance that they need to within that pressure. And um, and for me, Phil might be a very important part of that. Leighton Baines pushing for a start as well. Yes, absolutely. Back, back fit again. I mean, from a from a whole season, it's been pretty term, turmoil in in most parts of the season. And again, now because we're not achieving the results everybody expected, even myself didn't expect that we'd be slipping as much as we've slipped recently. So, let's get back on track against Brighton. The home form's been great, and it's going to have to be again on Saturday. Yeah, it is. I mean, we we fancy ourselves to beat anyone. You know, mm. Brighton coming to Goodison, but it's one. We definitely should win because mm. you know with the quality in in our team compared to theirs, and that's no disrespect to Brighton. Uh, their teams we should be should be beating, but when you're not like, when you're not on a roll or you're not playing well, Goodison Goodison could be a difficult place to play. Mm. So we need to give the fans something to mm. shout about early. Start well, and I'm sure if we start well, well, we'll win the match. It is all about starting well, isn't it? it, is, it is, in a yeah, game of football, is. you go out if you if you're not on your game straight away. Fans start to have a little moan at you and stuff like that. So it's important, for, like he said, from that first whistle to, to the last whistle, you go out there and you work and you run and you tackle. Yeah. And that's get, that gets the fans up at Goodison Park. Yeah. Jen Tosin took his goal well at Burnley, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, very good goal. Uh, seen bits of him in training, had a, had a look out there. He looks a finisher. For him to get his goal, when you go to a new club to get off the mark, it's, it, you know, as a striker, it, it's the biggest thing that can happen. And hopefully now he can go on from now to the end of the season, help us win some football matches, get some goals for himself, and then come back next season and hit the ground running. If selected, he could be up against Shane Duffy. 
Yeah. Lovely to see Shane operating in the Premier League because he's a cracking lad. Yeah, great lad. We we was in his company uh, for a good 10, 15 minutes down at Brighton mm. uh, when we played him down there. And to be fair, um, he's a good player. I wouldn't like to play mm. against Duffy. He's, yeah. he's strong, he's aggressive, he's good in both boxes. So he'll be wanting to prove a point as well uh, to the to the fans of, of Everton that he perhaps was good enough to play here. So uh, yeah, he's a, he's a tough character, he's a good lad. But uh, I hope he's on the losing side, though. That's good to say. That. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep it on the ground, I suppose, because Lewis Dunk is no slouch in the air either. No, we've got to. I mean, two, two probably the most aggressive centre halves in the league. Bit, bit of throwback from years ago, really, mm. to the centre halves that you came up against every week. You, don't, you tend not to see that many of them in the Premier League now, but they're two that, like Snod says, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be coming up, coming up against every week. It's a big, big game for Everton. It's Everton versus Brighton Hove Albion at Goodison Park on Saturday. As always, Snodd and I will be in the commentary box at Goodison Park. And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. My thanks to Franny Jeffers and to Snodds. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again in seven days' time. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.